Right, we're going to have a look at some other implicit differentiation kinds of questions here. This one, I've already said in the title, it's got a bit of a twist. There's going to be some things to do with simultaneous equations. Now, first of all, it wants us to find out what dy by dx is, and it wants it to be fully simplified, the answer. So we'll just see what that looks like when we dive in with this. OK, let's go straight in. Let's differentiate this expression that we've got here. Arifal, what's this going to start off with, please? Plus yep, plus, plus uh, dy dx. Good. Good, plus 2 dy dx because it's a y. Do you want to try and do this um, without writing it down, the product rule? Minus 4x dy dx. Minus 4x dy dx. So you can see there he's just differentiated the y. Minus 4 Good, and then this time he just differentiated the minus 4x and he kept the y. If you need to, write down u and v. Equals 0. Good. Often, that's the mistake people make is they just say, great, it equals 10. Did you have a question? No? OK. Um, now we just need to rearrange this so that it's dy by dx equals. So you may like to kind of save a little bit of time here. Perhaps you can factorize straight away. So we can say for dy by dx, we've got 2y plus 2 minus 4x. I've just gathered all of those bits together. And on the other side, I'm going to have 4y minus 2x minus 10. If you want to check that you've gathered all of those pieces, when you're doing that yourself, I often do things like I'll be like, OK, I've done that one, that one, and that one. Yep, and I've put that one, and I've done that one, and I've done that one. Then you can just see that everything, when you've got like six terms, it's quite nice to see that you've dealt with all of them and that they've all definitely been put into the, the rearranged version. So I'm just going to do my last stage now. I'm going to just do a divide. So it's going to be 4y minus 2x minus 10 all over 2y plus 2 minus 4x. It needs simplifying, though, doesn't it? Because it does say to fully simplify it. How can I simplify that? Half Just half everything. Correctly, rather than what I'm doing here. Um, perhaps I might have written this bit in a slightly different way. I might have write it as minus 2x plus 1. I just, I just kind of like to see the symmetry of what I've got on the top and bottom. I like to see it going y, x, minus 5. I could have written this in an alternative way. What could I do to the top and bottom that might change it? It's not better, but it's just an alternative way you might have done. I could negate everything. If you negate the numerator and the denominator, we know it's the same thing because it's multiplying the top and bottom by minus 1. It's an equivalent fraction. So if I negate everything here, I could have had it as x minus 2y plus 5 over 2x minus y minus 1. That answer and the blue answer are equivalent to each other. How would I have got the red answer? What thing might I have done differently? Yeah, if I put all of the dy by dx's onto the right-hand side, it would have come up with this. It's always worth knowing that you can have those two different versions of things. Now, this is where the question gets interesting. So this was just part A. Part B of the question now says, find the values of y for which dy by dx is equal to 0. So here is my dy by dx thing that I've got here. And I want this fraction here to be equal to 0. I want 2y minus x minus 5 over y minus 2x plus 1. I want that to be equal to 0. Now, when I want this to be equal to 0, am I interested in the numerator or the denominator? Numerator. The numerator. The denominator doesn't mean anything. I just want the numerator to be equal to 0. So I'm going to write that down. I want the numerator to be equal to 0. In other words, I want 2y minus x minus 5 to be equal to 0. Now I've got to that stage, I want to try and find out the value of y. But I can't find out the value of y, because if I find out what y is, it's equal to something in terms of x. So what can I do? Yes, good. Where would I substitute it in? Yeah. Um, so sort of. I'm actually going to do. Taylor suggested. She said, "Why don't you make something the subject? Why don't you make x the subject here?" And then Arifal swooped in before Taylor could finish her sentence, and said, 
after you find out what x is equal to, because we're trying to find out what y is, you can go back to the original equation and substitute it in, and that will then tell you what the values are, okay? Now, the question wants you to find out the values of y. So should I make y the subject or x the subject? You make x the subject so that it's in terms of y. So this is why the topic was called implicit, um, implicit differentiation with simultaneous equations, because we're now going to be doing this equation solved simultaneously with this equation here. making sure you've copied it out nice and carefully. So we're doing simultaneous equations with this and this. So if I make x the subject, you would get 2y minus 5. And then you're going to substitute that into this expression. What kind of equation is it going to generate for you? A quadratic, OK? So x squared is going to be 2y minus 5 squared plus y squared plus 10 lots of x plus 2y minus 4xy. So that's the same as minus 4y multiplied by x, all equals to 10. It looks complicated, but we know this is loads of quadratics all being added, or a few quadratics being added, so it's going to be a quadratic. This is where you want to be able to expand these in your head. Do you think you can expand that, Redwan? Yep. Yep. Good. And then we've got plus y squared, plus 20y, minus 50, plus 2y. Plus 20y equals 10. OK, so a big, long bit of algebra there that we've been needing to deal with. Yeah, sure. Then you're just going to go through and collect together all the things that you've got. So for the y squareds, I've got a 4y squared. That's 5y squared minus 8y squared. That's minus 3y squared. Minus 20y plus 20y. Well, they're going to cancel. And then you've got plus 2y plus 20y. That's plus 22y. Have I got something different here? OK, then for the numbers, I've got plus 25 minus 50, which is minus 25. And I'm also going to subtract the 10. So that's minus 35 equals 0. Is that right? I hope that's right. And then obviously, we're not going to do anything with that quadratic other than put it into our calculator. So it is minus 3, 22, and minus 35. And this gives us that either y is equal to 5 or 7 over 3. And then whilst you're doing that, I'm just going to quickly go on Desmos and type in a couple of those things that we've got. No, it didn't ask for the x-coordinate. It actually just asked for the y-coordinate. Pardon? Oh, the simultaneous equation was between these two, because we were using this. That was one of the facts that we had true. We wanted to make this condition and this condition be true at the same time. So we combined those together. That was the simultaneous equation. So what is it? x squared plus y squared. I'm just going to put it on the board so we can see x squared plus y squared. Can somebody just read out what the original one was? Shahan, can you just, it's x squared plus y squared plus? 10x yep. Plus 2y yep. Minus 4xy. Okay, so I'll just show you what the graph looks like. It's this. So the y coordinates where it has a gradient of 0 is here. You can see the y coordinate is 5. And I thought the other one we had was 7 over 3. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course it is. 7 over 3, 2 over 2.333 here. And if you wanted to find the x-coordinate as well, you could just take the x-coordinate. You could do the y-coordinate times it by 2 and subtract 5. And so you can see how they would correspond to these two coordinates that we've got here. OK? So I think we'll keep that as just one separate example. Yeah? <laughs> 